It's the 90s, dude. Those were totally awesome. What's up? I'm Andrew Fantasia, and this is Infinity Rewatch to the max. Who's my <laughs> extreme co-host? Oh, yeah. Here I am. It's Brian J. Whitehead. Totally extreme. Totally radical. Yo, Ryan, you know what I love? What do you love, Andrew? Game shows where they pour green slime on kids, yo. <laughs> oh, oh there you go oh, i love that show i i mean i actually had a friend who went on that show and not only got slimed but his team won and he won a jvc kaboom a ghetto blaster oh stereo system that required the most massive batteries that you plug into this thing and he let me borrow it for literally what was supposed to be a full day and his dad came and knocked on my parents' door and was like, yo, that thing's like $500. I, can't, like, <laughs> I don't can't, blame like, walk around with that. Yeah, I don't blame that dad one bit. You know what? That doesn't even, this, this story doesn't even surprise me. And I've never heard you tell it before because like you grew up in the Port Credit area. And I feel like that was just like all those kids who grew up in that area ended up on TV. Like my <laughs> friend, when I lived in the Port Credit area, my friend's front porch was the front porch from Goosebumps where the dog is sitting on the porch. That's his, <laughs> it's just, I don't, know, no I don't know what it is about Port Credit, but they just, <laughs> they scoop up those children. Um, I, I could never understand what the Punisher was saying on uh oh, but I had a huge crush on the girl who would read like the questions really fast. Um, oh she yeah she yeah. was she was fantastic i mean for, well to first of all that's just gta i think the gta in general just produces these young child stars um i actually to be accurate i didn't live in port credit per se i lived close to it but i lived in the like the literally the border between lauren park and clarkson Oh, okay. for, for those of you who want to be educated in the, geogra <laughs> the geographical layout of the gta <laughs> It's like there's like Port Credit and then there's like Lauren Park if you continue to go west and then it gets into Clarkson and then uh, and then Oakville. But that's that's where I was. Google map <laughs> his old house. Google map the house. You can peek in the windows and see where Ryan grew up watching things like not WandaVision, but watching things like what WandaVision did this week because it was the 90s. It was the 90s. It was. Right? Yeah. And it reminded I to, me. I have to give... I have to give props though because like I love that they did like a punk rock intro. Yeah. Like it was so cool. It reminded me just of every Nickelodeon slash family channel sitcom. Cause that was what it was all about. It was, you know, the the punk rock thing, and then the kids come down in their like their grunge shirts and whatever. And they like look down the camera lens and they say, Man, I have a really hard math quiz coming up today. I sure hope that I can get to go to the dance or what I don't know what kids did in the nineties. But you know what I mean? It was all even even like DuckTales did it, where they where they stopped Ooh. doing DuckTales and they started doing quack pack in the nineties, remember? And like Huey Dewey. Oh Huey, yeah. They had their their mm. their their grunge nineties attitude and they were like, yo man, grown up suck, kids rock. Let's go to <laughs> Let's go to McDonald's and I don't know, have some baked potatoes or so. I don't know what kids did. I was I was one of them, but I didn't do anything apparently in the 1990s. Well, the the big thing is, uh, I mean, it was quite shocking to see. But I mean, the the thing was they they had like cereal uh, and watch TV and they like shotgun soda cans, which I thought was hilarious, by the way. Uh, but like, I, I mean, even Captain Crunch had like the Crunch Crew. You know, in the 90s yeah. with that attitude kind of thing going on. Um, I remember the rap, like, town to the letter. It's so good. They're like, <laughs> we're the Crunch Crew. And Crunch is what we do. We're hanging out, trying to make it happen. Crunch, Crunch, is that the captain? And it's, oh, man, it's so good. New crew, the Crunch is with that. <laughs> it's so good. I miss Attitude, mascots. that's what it was all about. Yeah, it was all about attitude, sunglasses, the raised eyebrow. Mascots, man. They're, they're a thing of the past. They don't exist anymore. We're going to bring them back, Ryan. We're going to bring them back. We're gonna, that's it. We're yeah. going to bring them back, man. Bring them back with attitude. Much like this show. This show had a lot of attitude, and that's what we need to be getting into, man. This Halloween spooktacular episode. Boo. It was beautiful to look at. Oh. <laughs> Well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we had a spooky mm -hmm. old time. Uh, you might even say a terrific time uh, because we oh, got to man. see Wanda and Vision in their costumes, man. 
their actual oh, legit man. costumes and the kids and Quicksilver. Everybody, everybody got those costumes, and I loved how they did it. It was totally like a retro, uh, retro, retrospective. There we go, retrospective look at their outfits in a hilarious way. I mean, first we get uh, we get Wanda coming down in her in her uh, full on Scarlet Witch regalia there, and she. Uh, I love how she even explained it a Sokovian gypsy. Uh, fortune telling g- uh, gypsy, which was interesting because uh, um, uh, Quicksilver and Wanda were given to gypsies uh, mm. before they were sent off to Wondergore. So uh, that was kind of a neat little nod there. And then, yes, we see Vision in his classic Vision outfit. And I like how uh, Quicksilver calls him a booger. That was pretty good. <laughs> but what I love, though, too, was we got to see uh, Billy and Tommy's outfits, uh, which was kind of interesting, even though Billy's was more. Okay, so I kept, I, I think I got confused with the twins, but Billy is magic. So he was the one with the cape. And then Tommy is the fast one. But I think it's the other way around. I think it's yeah. Tommy is the magic one and Billy's the quick one. Like in the comics? Yeah. Okay. But I don't know. But I think even in the show, it's the same way. But I'm not sure because I think I got confused midway through. But, but yeah, so I think Tommy's magic and Billy's uh, speed. And then... Um, so yeah, but we got to see them in their costumes, which I thought was taking it that extra step further to give us that, you know, that Marvel experience. Yeah, we got like we straight out got Wiccan and Speed in this episode. Yeah, Wiccan and Speed. Wiccan and Speed. There you MCU go. You know. Uh, I'm glad that they didn't use the green Quicksilver outfit because I still I can't my brain cannot comprehend like the guy's name is Quicksilver. Let's put him in green. <laughs> like that just I, I'm so I'm so glad they didn't do that. Um, mm-hmm. Did the comics ever explain what that thing on Wanda's head is like, or is it just a hat? I, uh, it's, I would even, I would call it like a crown or something or a headband or something like that. I, I don't think they actually explain what it is. Uh, like Magneto's helmet, they actually kind of created a unique purpose, but I don't think Wanda serves a similar purpose in the sense of like Xavier or sorry, like Magneto wears the helmet to block, xavier from reading his mind kind of thing but even that i found was a a later thing like i think he just had a very kind of knight looking helmet um but yeah with wanda's with wanda's kind of crown or headband i guess i don't know I, i think that's just something that she she's always had and never really served any sort of purpose but i can tell you a fun fact is that uh back in the day marvel only could print limited colors Yes. So that's why certain heroes had certain looks, and that's why Hulk eventually became green. Um, but green was an expensive color to use. So uh, that's why Quicksilver later on also got green down the road, I guess, because they just needed to, to flex their the, the, the muscles, right, and use, started using more green colors. But my understanding also was green was uh, a representation of, of questionable heroes. Well, yeah, because green is all over villains like comic book villains you stand them all in a mm. row you're getting green and purple for days like that's just how exactly right yeah yeah so but I'm, even I'm, even hulk down the road eventually became green but he was still kind of an anti-hero-ish character yeah and and the uh i think the idea was that because the red and blue and yellow primary colors because they were cheaper they could use it more and the idea was mm-hmm. like you're going to see in a Spider-Man comic, you're going to see Spider-Man on like 20 pages and you'll see the Scorpion on maybe five. So (sighs) it makes sense that the hero would have the ink. That's the colors that are cheaper to make red and blue and yellow. Mm -hmm. And the villain would have the green and purple colors, which is like, it's more expensive, but we're not going to see him as much. So it's okay. It's cool. We can do that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, no, totally. And but I think it was also just a, a good way to kind of measure or a good way for memory, you know, or give people kind of a indication that something might be up with it. Like in Star Trek, when someone wears a red shirt, you know, mm. something's going to happen to them. But I think that was kind of the same thing. I'm actually wearing a Mysterio shirt right now. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that uh, green was was used in an interesting way. But I agree with you. I'm glad that they brought in the uh, the original or sorry, the blue Quicksilver outfit. Um, even with the classic lightning bolt, which was kind of cool to see. Um, and, you know, 
Marvel left us off in the last episode on quite the cliffhanger. And so we're going into this with a lot of questions. Like, like yeah. we went into this episode with like Quicksilver. What that? What is that about? Even the recap ended with the same note. And it's like, Quicksilver, what is that about? Who is uh, Monica's friend, uh, the aerospace engineer? And on top of that, uh, we're also left with this director. Like, what is his deal? And so in this episode, what happens is at this point, the kids, you know, they're hanging out with their wacky uncle. What? Um, and, and Vision is clearly he knows something is going on. And this is another question we've had with Vision. Like, he knows what's going on. So what is Vision's deal and what's going on? So he decides to go on a Vision quest, if you will. Oh, uh, well played. <laughs> But but yeah, he goes and decides to go on a vision quest. And it's kind of interesting the dynamic of storytelling that they use because you can clearly tell that him and Wanda are having this argument that kind of is not is kind of hurting the family dynamic a little bit. Uh and so he decides to go his own way. And then yeah, Quicksilver's like, okay, let's do it. Um and so they they get ready to go out for Halloween, and then we cue into Sword, I believe. Yeah, um, the the whole vision thing is really unsettling because to me it feels like uh, it feels like a, an, a physically abusive marriage where you know one of the spouses has to kind of tiptoe around the other one and hide. Mm -hmm. uh, we really got that sense like there was something Vision said when he came down the stairs and like he was like, "Oh, but it doesn't matter because you know that was all that was in my closet, right?" And he kind of looked yeah. at her and they're like. <laughs> immediately he walked it back he's like i'm sorry i'm not i'm not uh, trying to cause trouble um and that was funny but also unsettling uh but yeah when we when we go to sword they are just being well uh, the director at least is just being a big old jerk i told you i didn't trust this guy man there's something something you knew him. man you, yeah <laughs> yeah something's you, really messed up you're not you don't get to be a director of something without uh you know ruffling a few feathers uh and i don't know exactly what happened to maria rambo uh we assume mm -hmm. she just got sick because that's what they say but i wouldn't be surprised if this son of a something or other has something to do with it. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he was just trying to get that promotion a little earlier than he would have. Um, so I, I yeah. don't trust him with a 10 foot pole, but yeah. The, the yeah. fighting that happens, the infighting oh. is, is really cool because it creates this new team that I think we all were eager to see, right? It creates this, this new trio. It's like, okay, who needs those goons? We don't need the stormtroopers with the guns. We got these three and they're going to go and they're going to, they're going to cause some shit. Yeah, no. So we got, at this point, there seems to be a lot of kind of, uh, there seems to be kind of a mutiny going on here because. A mutant. Um, what, oh, oh, I didn't even see that. Oh, that was good. <laughs> well, yes, a mutant. Uh, good call. Good call. Um, it seems to be like, yes, there's this mutiny going on here. And what's happening is, is clearly the director, there's something wrong with him. Like he has his own agenda here. Uh, another nod to a, an X-Men story, a hidden agenda. See what I did there? Oh, um, yes. But uh, it seems like there is some sort of hidden agenda going on here. And man, is he after like he is just harping on Wanda, treating her like just just a villain essentially and what i thought was interesting that i didn't even pick up on the last episode was on the drone was a, it was labeled stark in uh, stark industries which means that this is the second time wanda's been attacked by stark industries weapons tech that's right yeah i didn't even see that on i think i was typing something to you during that point because mm. you you brought up something really good um you messaged me during the show and you said like hey pietro's memories are different. Pietro's yes. remembering different things. And I was trying to remember mm. because for the life of me, like I just can't, the plot of the dark Phoenix movie was so watery that it just kind of dissipated. Like it, it doesn't exist in my brain anymore. I, I can't tell you what happened in that movie, except some boring aliens walked around. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm just trying to remember what the hell happened to Quicksilver in the dark Phoenix movie. And I even looked it up and all I could find was, he got injured halfway through while they were fighting Jean Grey, and that's all it says. So do you remember what happened to him? 
I fun fact, I've actually never seen the Dark Phoenix. Oh damn. Okay, so this is gonna be harder than I thought. <laughs> so minor spoilers, he gets injured at some point. Um I, okay. I don't think he died. Um, mm -hmm. but there was there was a fight on a street with Gene and he got injured. That's that's all I could remember. And I don't remember him being in the final climactic fight, but like I was just trying because he he made a comment in this episode where he's like, I got, I got shot. I had like bullets in me. And then next thing I know, I woke up here and I'm like, okay, did, did he get shot? And, and like, I, I can't for life me remember if, if Gene mm -hmm. shot him. Um, it, it would make sense. Like maybe he was trying to stop, like push somebody out of the way of some bullets and he got hit. But yeah. I, I honestly just can't remember, man. Dark Phoenix just was not memorable at all. No, but but to be fair though, the Quicksilver and Age of Ultron did get shot. Oh, that's a really good point. I'm looking in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm looking in the wrong place. Wow. Yeah, you mm -hmm. you trumped me with that one. That's right. He did get shot. That's right. He he got shot. Now the interesting thing here is is that I don't know. I didn't get a good I didn't get a good moment of the dead body, but I doubt they would bring in uh they would bring in the original actor just for that one zombie shot. Like, I just don't feel like that's the thing. Not but me. but I think as a nod, because they did recast him, it still makes sense. Like, Wanda did re-warp him up. So she, But she still remembers how he died, which is being shot. He was shot many a times um, by saving Hawkeye. So I think that still kind of plays in continuity. But we did see in the show uh, that we did see in this episode that she does seem to test him on his history a little bit of their family history. Yeah. So, but again, classic Marvel writing team with Feige. They don't really give you what what his history is. They just say what it isn't. Or sorry, they just say like what Wanda wants it to be. Yeah, and he catches yeah. on. He he catches mm -hmm. on and he's like, oh, no, you're testing me. I'm not going to fall for this. And then they made uh, they made a really cute kick-ass reference. Uh, did you, did yes. you catch that? Yeah, that was... I did. <laughs> that was cool. That was... Uh, I think that's as close, I think, that the MCU has ever gotten to just reaching out and breaking that fourth wall because that was that was really well played. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, to talk about this kind of the combination of things in general here, so going back to S.W.O.R.D., first of all, yes, there's a lot of hype about, you know, first of all, Mr. Jimmy Woo flexing his combat muscles a little bit Ooh, and taking Woo. out some sword, some S.W.O.R.D. Uh, personnel. Uh, I loved, actually, uh, Isabella, who you may see in the background every once in a while, she was talking about... Uh, <laughs> Uh, she was talking about why isn't anyone noticing that the, the guards were knocked out and thrown in like a steel container. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I am seeing an eerie, I am seeing an eerie similarity to the same events that play out with Thor in the first movie, which is Ooh. Thor infiltrates the shield facility and he wears a poncho. And it looks like Jimmy Woo and Monica Rambeau and Darcy, they wear the ponchos, uh, very similar to infiltrating the facility. So uh, that was kind of interesting to see them do that. And in reference to the Monica's health condition, um, there's it seems to be that there's this ongoing theory that Wanda may create mutants. Um, there kind of might be a theory, or sorry, there might be a reverse House of M, where as opposed to no more mutants, we're going to see a whole bunch of mutants. Okay, because that that clears the air a lot because there was a moment, I can't remember what her exact quote was, but Monica mm -hmm. says a thing to one of the people she's around where she's like, oh, don't worry about my, you know, my health, my condition or something like that. And for a second, I was like, wait, is she dying? Did I miss something? Like, does she have cancer or something? And I went down this right. weird rabbit hole where I was like, oh, my God, did Captain Marvel give her cancer with her, like, atomic <laughs> powers or something? Like, it, I, I mm -hmm. went really far. And, and I was like, that's why she doesn't talk to Captain Marvel anymore. And then, but no, this, this makes a lot more sense because um, her cells were rewritten at a molecular level. So, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe she's, and who knows, maybe they're pulling a fast one on us. Because who did you say? What what's Monica Rambo's superhero name? Phasar or something? Photon? Spectrum. Spectrum. Okay. So what if they're like, you know what? Forget Spectrum. We're gonna make her we're gonna make Monica like the new storm or something. 
Like mm. what what if what if they go that route? Like what if they they just kind of really take the curveball? Uh, I don't know, man, because Marvel has definitely learned their lesson with kind of meshing two characters into one. I mean, I could be wrong. It, this this show could go anywhere, like mm. I, anywhere at this point. And they could do, they t- at this point, they could really do no wrong, but that doesn't mean they should push the limits of that, that you know, having that mentality. And I think that Monica Rambeau is very much Ra- Monica Rambeau. She actually, in the 70s and 80s, she was a very popular character. So, cool. um, you know, that character needs needs the justice to be to be served. But that being said, um, her powers, uh, you know, for example, um, uh, her powers could be triggered by, uh, by Wanda, who actually essentially does have the same powers of an affinity stone of an infinity stone and to play up the justice of age of ultron um wanda and P- pietro got their powers from an infinity stone so i mean the possibility here and and the alignment is kind of really nice at this point and if you play along this this very fine line then i think you could easily turn things into mutants right so turn people into mutants with wanda's power so that will be kind of interesting to see if that plays out yeah and i mean i don't want to jump ahead yet but i feel like by the end that's exactly what's happening um (laughs) i feel like that's exactly what's playing out now i have a question for our american listeners because i i I got a I have a bone to pick with you, America. Why is it that in films and on TV, whenever you guys tackle the subject of Halloween, people are always trick-or-treating in broad daylight. What's up with that? What (laughs) is up with that? Are you insane? That's not how it works. Uh, Well, let me, let me, let me, let me correct you, sir. I will correct you probably on behalf of the American people. Good, please do. Uh, uh, there's two. There's two kind of phases to Halloween. First of all, they start in the daytime because the youngest Halloweeners go out there and get candy because they're really young, and it would also be dangerous to trick or treat at night because cars will have a harder time seeing them. So that's that's part one, I think, that that why we usually see Halloween take place when there's still daylight outside and it transitions into nighttime is because, again, they always want to capture the kids because that's what Halloween's all about. It's about the kids. Right. And to be to be safe, what they want to do is they want to uh, to be safe. They want to have the, the younger kids go out earlier and do their trick or treating. I see. I can understand that, but I, maybe it depends on what part of like where geographically you live. Because like here where we are, around Halloween, the sun goes down at around quarter after seven, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're trick or treating and it's broad daylight, that means you're trick or treating at around like six o'clock, maybe five thirty. Like people are still getting home from work. <laughs> like who's there to give you candy? <laughs> uh good good question i mean yeah i u.s u.s uh, listeners if you guys could fill us in a little more details on that that would be great please um do. <laughs> uh but yeah i mean it, it's it's definitely weird but um i mean of course we see uh we see some interesting things happen though in wanda's world it looks like wanda is losing her grip a little bit because everyone seems to less play up the illusion that they're uh, like less give less of the illusion that they're kind of playing in the world. And they're being like, oh, we're going to do it because you want it to happen. Yeah, it feels like um, <laughs> Isabella's having a great time back there. Yeah, um, Isab- I don't know what she's listening to something <laughs> funny, but it's true. Sorry, sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. I'm glad. Yeah, don't be sorry. <laughs> that's that's very good ambient background noise. I like that. Um, right. I, I, I feel like what we saw it was it was like the when Westworld is starting to break down and you go to certain pockets of the park and the robots are just like mm-hmm. like that's kind of like that lady on the clothesline man that was spooky that was weird you know what else is weird though that I want to point out speaking of spooky in the last episode vision talks about where are the kids mm-hmm. and then this whole episode the city is filled with kids yeah 
even Pietro brings it up. He's like, okay, yeah, that's cute. You wheeled the kids out for the obligatory Halloween episode. Yeah, very, very good, Wanda. Good job. Like, he's really yeah. able to see through her BS, which makes me yeah. think more than anything, he is definitely a figment of her imagination. Mm-hmm. Or, like well, her. yes, I think... I think it's her conscience playing against herself a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like, she definitely doesn't have his corpse. There's no. But way that's she what's weird, his- right? Because she sees him dead. Yeah. Right. So, and then with everyone having this spell uh, on them, um, it's kind of it's kind of very bizarre. But yeah, I, I'd say that uh, I'd say that I don't know. Maybe she is a figment. But if the kids can see and interact with him. Is that her power making him look as real as possible to other people? Um, and that and that being said, like, is is his body actually there, or is it just her creating kind of an illusion of him? You know what I mean? So, which is which is interesting. So, I don't know. I mean, it's it's very very weird. Um, and then the other thing that's interesting is talking about giving people powers. I think being in Wanda's world. <laughs> <laughs> as Isabella dances in the background. Um, I think the other thing about this world is the kids get their powers after, you know, out of nowhere. Yeah. So what's going on with that? Yeah, they didn't try to make that any kind of big thing. It was just, mm-hmm. I, I think it it was so perfectly timed because like we said, the 90s sitcoms were all about like, hey, I'm the kid and I'm talking to the camera. So here like we have the kids, their their powers are set up, their personalities are set up. It, it was almost like gift wrapped for this particular chunk of time. Uh, and they mm-hmm. didn't even need to establish it because every sitcom episode so far has, none of them have felt really, maybe with the exception of the pilot, none of them have felt like the first episode of a series. You know, they all have felt like these people have been doing this show for a while. So you don't mm-hmm. need to see that whole like, oh boy, we have powers now. It just kind of comes with the territory. Like, what's that yeah. show that Wizards of Waverly plays? Like, I felt like I was watching that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they definitely had this kind of. Um, well, they definitely went for the Malcolm in the Middle. That's what they were going for. Mm-hmm. But I agree with you. But I, I think it's interesting, and it, I think it's starting to explain, in terms of where it's leading, it's starting to explain, uh, you know, how how mutants may become a thing. And I think this theory is going to play out. So I, I think this is something we should pay attention to as, as uh, Infinity Rewatch plays out. We got three episodes left, if, I, if it is nine episodes total. Um, so I'm kind of interested, interested to see how that question gets answered. And if WandaVision will kick off the mutant, uh, mutant way uh, and see how mutants will be introduced that way. So I don't know, uh, but we still, we still have a lot of ground to cover. So vision on his vision quest, this was interesting because he goes to see Agnes. Um, and this is one of the scenes from the trailers. And so vision has this ability, which I think it's kind of like he generates electricity to like spark the brain to wake up kind of thing. Um, and this was interesting to me. So, from what we understand in WandaVision so far, uh, Vision seems to... Uh, okay, so Vision doesn't seem to remember his past. He only remembers in what's happening in the world, in Wanda's world. So um, the if you take a step back for a second, he he's trying to kind of put it all together. He's trying to figure out what happened to him. And so he knows something's wrong with this world. And he seems that like when he goes outside of Wanda's presence, everyone kind of seems to be in that weird suspended state. Like the woman with the tear, like you were saying, it's very weird, but they also seem like they're an incredible amount of pain, which is what, which is what the, the norm said in the last one was he's in an incredible amount of pain. Uh, And so that was interesting as well. So he wakes up Agnes. Now Agnes we're all trying to still figure out what she is. Now, when he woke her up, she seems to think she's alive or she, we don't know what, I don't even know how to describe the kind of mental state she's in, but she, she says, Oh, uh, your vision, the, you're, you're one of the Avengers. And what blew my mind. And I didn't even realize this was vision said, what's an Avenger. Yeah. Wow. That totally went over my head. This whole Agnes mm. scene was 
mondo bizarro. It, it really just didn't fit. I wasn't expecting this reaction out of Agnes. I wasn't expecting this reaction out of Vision. It really threw me for a loop, which I think is what they were trying to do. So tip of the cap, mm. mission accomplished. Um, <laughs> I, and I've said it before too, Catherine Hahn, she's a gorgeous lady and she looked good as a witch. Um, but I, I, I think there's a, a, a tongue in cheek reason that she was dressed as a witch, Ryan. And I'm sure you know more about Agatha Harkness than yeah. I do. So I'm sure you, you know, there's some kind of connection there. Um, mm-hmm. And I think uh, Agnes even had a gray wig. So she's slipping into the part. I am, I have no evidence to back this up other than my own personal bias, but I'm going to go ahead and say that everything she said to Vision here, their whole interaction she was just faking it. She's just playing along to get what she wants. Ooh, that's an interesting theory. You might be right, though, because, I mean, it's tough It's tough to say. I, I mean, I think you're right, though, because the evidence would, would definitely support then that she's kind of playing everybody uh, and that really the spell didn't do anything to her. Um, but what's interesting about about it is is that again um she tells him that he's dead uh which i thought was interesting like she knows he's dead so she know she clearly is well informed as to what is going on with the world of the avengers right and i think that she's also well informed as to what's going on in the world of uh i always forget is it westview is that the name of the the city westview yeah westview so like uh, because you got to ask yourself, why is she sitting in that parked car on the border? Um, and I, I think that it's just, again, this is totally just my own wants and desires. I have nothing to back this up, but I, it feels to me like she's mm-hmm. just, she knows where vision will end up and she's keeping him from leaving because she needs this to play out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, she definitely does. She, she needs this to play out, and I think it's it's going to have to do with the kids. Something is going to be up with the kids because there's a lot of evidence talking about that everything that goes into Wanda's world is real. Um, it is real. It's warped, but it's real. So we get to see Monica's outfit, her sword outfit, get warped into a '70s outfit, but it's still Kevlar. It's still the material, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then Monica says that the kids are real. Uh, which is interesting. So I don't know if that conversation, which is an important conversation in the comics, if the debate that the kids are real uh, is going to happen. So if Marvel formula plays out, then then Agnes is playing everybody and she's coaching Wanda to create these kids to help Mephisto. Which is terrifying. And I hope it's true. Uh, speaking of terrifying, it's time for a totally tubular commercial break. Oh, uh, yeah. This was a weird one. This was a weird one. This reminds me of, you ever watch, there's a, a YouTube series with puppets. It's called Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. You ever heard of this? No. When we're done recording, I want you to watch the first episode of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. I think it's called Let's Get Creative. Um, Mm -hmm. it is hilarious and disturbing, just like (laughs) this commercial, which started off as the most nineties thing I've ever seen in my life. And then Mm -hmm. it took a turn. Um, what, what do you, what do you make of this? What's going on here? Oh, I'm glad you asked because I still think the, the theory that we have on infinity rewatch exclusive theory um well not exclusive because i think other people are are hinting at it but yeah but other people suck so never mind them no (laughs) okay but this this theory was really good and i do i do respect this theory so i think that it is still referencing the infinity stones um now uh the reason is as i think the 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 yogurt being magic is kind of uh kind of the interesting thing kind of like kind of the distraction if you think about it so i think that what happens is is that they're still referencing the soul stone here because it's that island that little island that thanos sees in the uh in the soul stone world Mm -hmm. um and then the other reason is is they mention 
that they say something along the lines of there was two and now there's one. Oh, okay. Yeah, again, not a direct quote, but I definitely remember something along those lines. That's that's what happened. So with that being said, I think that, uh, I think that yeah, I think that we're, we saw the soul stone now. So we've seen power. Um, we've seen time. We've seen uh, space with the, the, the soap. Uh, and then now we've seen, um, and now we've seen the yogurt, which is going to be the soul because the kid turns to death. <laughs> yeah, he turns to death. All right. Uh, is that which is of- really weird. Like that commercial was bizarre. He couldn't open, he couldn't <laughs> open a thing of yogurt. And then it's just like, yo, magic, the food for survivors. Like that is, mm-hmm. oh man, I could, I want to watch that commercial again. So we've only had four commercials. Is that right? Out of I six episodes? So. Wow. Four. Okay. Four commercials. Cause, cause the, uh, unless I'm forgetting one. Last but, week uh, was there. Oh no. Oh, no. Lagos. We had paper Lagos. Towels. Paper towels. Yeah. Yes. The Lagos paper towels, which was reality. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So one so more. This is commercial. five. Yeah. Five, so one more commercial, and we have our stones. Um, and I so, think you're right on the money. I think it's all gem related. Um, so if if we've had reality, time, soul, power, you know what that leaves us with? The mind stone. <laughs> oh, oh my yeah. god. Okay, there we go. It's uh, this is gonna be a. The commercials are getting darker. I, I can't wait for you to watch Don't Hug Me. I'm scared now. <laughs> no, I, it sounds it sounds terrifying, and I don't do I don't do horror. <laughs> it's not but, one of those okay. things where like something's gonna jump out, and you know you'll be like staring at the screen, and then something will go. Bleh! It's not that. It's not that at all. Uh, it's it's along the lines of this commercial that we saw, where you're like, "What did I just?" See? Um, but that might be my new favorite Wandavision commercial because. That shark was perfect with his sunglasses, mm-hmm. with the way he spoke, with his aggressive, extreme attitude. Like it was perfect. Um, and then we we finished off with the finale of of just pissing Wanda off some more because it just it feels yes. like Sword is just great at pissing Wanda off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so now the pressure is on and uh and Monica even says um Monica even says her friends an hour away. Mm-hmm. So there's apparently apparent okay, there's a big conversation right now. Have we seen the cameo, this epic cameo that uh one has been talking about? We know Doctor Strange is coming. We know that. But there's one that they haven't spoiled yet, and they said there's a big cameo. Now, we still don't know if that was Quicksilver or if there's one still coming. And so if that's the case, this friend could be a big one. Could be huge. Could be very Um, huge. I am still in the the camp that you so brilliantly put me in last week, sir, with mm -hmm. uh, Kelsey Grammer as Beast coming back. That's where my heart and soul lie i just i don't I want mean, anything but that now i don't know i mean i again i love i love that bet and again i agree with you i think it's going to be beast it, it's just again if you base it on the marvel formula the marvel formula mean which to recap for you guys the marvel formula is the events of the comic are still the same but like so they have to happen but the transitions and things leading up to set events can change. And the way they do it is, for example, we know in Civil War, Cap fights Iron Man. We know that's going to happen in Civil War. So how do they do it in the movies? Well, the kid, uh, a kid dies as a result of the Avengers, which, which happens in the comic. Then there is uh, Iron Man kicks off the Registration Act with the government, which he works with Ross to do. And then we have the battle between Cap and Iron Man, um, which is a which is a big event there as well. And the way that that kicked off was through the parents being murdered. So, so what's happening here and what we're seeing is is that um, with if we're seeing House of M, 
we are clearly seeing Quicksilver. He's back. Uh, we are seeing uh, we're seeing Sword introduced. So if Sword's introduced and in that comic, then we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen yet who uh, we haven't seen Beast yet. And Beast was for the major part of the end of the first issue was that Beast joined Sword. Bring me so, that Kelsey. Bring me that Kelsey Grammar, yeah, please. I I mean, don't get me wrong. They set up the Fantastic Four with the space shuttle program. It would. It still the read card can be played, and you guys even voted on Twitter. You you went on my Twitter page, uh, and you checked out that post, and you voted, and you've all uh, voted read. You're still banking that it's read. I think there was like two votes for Hank, so uh, another Hank character. So. I mean, I, I want it to be Beast because I think it just makes sense in terms of the Marvel theory and that they could still hint at Fantastic Four and plant those seeds like they did for other characters in the MCU down the road. Um, uh, like, uh, what was another, like, teasing... Uh, oh, my God, it's it's killing me now. Oh, man, uh, I can't think of it. But well, they have like in the they past teased, teased like, things. They tease like Scarlet Witch at the end of Winter Soldier. Like, there yes. you go. Like, that whole... We, mm. we, didn't, we had no idea those two characters were going to show up in this Captain America movie, which was a very grounded movie with very few powers, just soldiers and car chases. And then all of a sudden, we finish things off with like, oh, yeah, there's the twins. And she's like, ooh, creepy magic. And he's running around like the Flash. It's like, whoa. We were caught completely by surprise. So here we have lots of magic and creepy stuff and whatever. And then we could get caught surprised by this big blue huggable man of science who comes in and he's like, you know, if you read your Tolstoy, it says that man and machine, you know, I'm just trying to say something that sounds like it would come out of beast's mouth and I'm doing a piss poor job of it. But you know what I'm trying to say? It'll happen. (laughs) It'll happen. And I cannot... Uh, I want to believe you. And again, I think it will because here's my Marvel theory that I was trying to hint at earlier is you look at Adam Warlock. Adam Mm -hmm. Warlock has been teased in Guardians left, right, and center. Like just left, right, and center. In the the East, even in Thor 2, there was a giant cocoon that looked exactly like Adam Warlock's cocoon. And then we saw that same similar cocoon, uh, which was more high tech, later on. So it's it's I think with Fantastic Four, it's the same thing. It's it's going to be like hint, spaceship, hint, this, hint, this until like the movie it happens. Like we may see like Doom, we may see a character, but I think Beast is the more likely choice because with the hint that uh, Quicksilver's in this, and this is all about Sword, which Sword is now a big playable role within the MCU. Then it makes sense if they're and they're not doing like an XN movie, X Men movie anytime soon. That it would make sense to throw in Beast right now. Exactly, sprinkle it in, get people excited. Um, mm. Now I don't remember exactly visually how they uh, presented it to us, Ryan. But the hex clearly moved and got bigger. But yes. did we see it stop moving, or are we to assume it is still? pac-manning its way across new jersey because if that's the case i feel like from here on in these three episodes are all going to take place inside this unstoppable hex so far it seems like it's continuing to to, continuing to grow uh the director seems really panicked that uh that it's coming after him so uh he seems really upset about that which i don't know if that's a nod to anything um there is also speaking of theories about the, the the aerospace engineer friend there is a prevailing theory that her friend is a scroll uh which is the little girl scroll that that you see at the end of captain marvel but again i i don't know if that's going to be a big cameo payoff didn't she much. say it was a heat didn't she say my friend yes. he's an aerospace you're, engineer yes you're right so already that that takes that theory out of the water. Yeah. Um, so that being said, yes, this bubble keeps growing. Um, as far as we know, yes, it's perpetually still growing. What's crazy is, is now we're seeing this carnival, which is interesting. I don't yeah. know the reference to the carnival yet. 
Um, but there's a very specific reason why there's a carnival. I don't know why, but for some reason, there's a carnival. And what the I find flying is, Grayson's mega crossover. Ah, well, what I find is interesting is Darcy looks like she's going to be trapped inside. Now, what was crazy about the scene too, is we see vision come out of the bubble and a second he comes out of the bubble. He is alive, but the bubble's pulling him back in and he's, he's falling apart. Yeah. And that was not pleasant to watch like that really mm. frightened me. Uh, I feel like, yeah, I feel like that's just a simple matter of he's dead. So as soon as he leaves the hex, he starts to deteriorate. And Wanda, mm -hmm. since Wanda's whole thing is about like keeping him alive, that was why the hex ripped him back. So I think mm -hmm. that like, cause she warns the kid, she's like, don't go past that street. Cause obviously if they do, they'll wander outside and they'll be like, Hey, we were living in a fake world. Um, but I don't think mm -hmm. Vision can physically walk out of that barrier because it was built to keep him. It's his cage. Everybody else is just living in it. So I think if the kids had walked out, it would just be like a like nothing. Like it would be like walking through a portal. They'd be freaked out, but they'd be fine. I think it's just for keeping Vision in there. And his departure creates that chaos and then of course wanda just got mad and was like oh no you don't and she made it bigger so that he can't get ripped apart and we end up uh, even though the episode was not short in length it felt short man it felt like it was mm. over in the snap of a finger and i'm like i i feel i don't know if this is the right episode to follow such a big reveal of Evan Peters. Uh, hi. It's a tough, it's a tough one. I mean, I don't know because like the other thing is a lot of people are already asking like, is there going to be a season two of the show? And fair for Marvel to say like, it's not, not currently their plan, which is okay because that means that they could continue the story i think if you ask me i think that this cameo is is plays a very important role and and a very historic role will this character will we see more of quicksilver i don't think so i don't think he serves a purpose more than what's going to happen within the events of one division because again, you have to think. Now, this is strictly from the movie side. This is, and this is our experience of watching movies. And 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 my brother Fantasia here, man, you could throw in your two cents here. But usually, in film or in writing, when a character has fulfilled their full purpose, then they conclude that story, tidy it up, and then put it away. Like either the character dies, uh, the the character passes on you know, that legacy of their journey to somebody else. But either way, like that's the character is done. And I think Quicksilver, if Quicksilver's role, I think isn't quite finished yet, but it is clear that it's leading up to something. And I think that something is going to happen within the story. And then that's it. Yeah, I think you're right, man. I don't think he is gonna stick around and be like hey i'm in avengers 5 i'm like i i don't see that happening mm -hmm. i think it was just a matter of it it was just the perfect cocktail of he is this he is the one character who existed in both of these studio franchises that's it like they didn't nobody else had a shared character like that who was running simultaneously literally mm -hmm. running so yeah they used that to tie it in and it fits perfectly because he's her brother. Like all the pieces, it's almost like Kevin Feige knew they were going to buy Fox like 20 years ago. I don't know. This is, uh, this is kind of free, <laughs> but I think he's here to serve his purpose. And then that's it. As for there being a season two, I hope there isn't because I much rather like, I like the idea of instead of a show with, you know, you know instead of giving us like five shows and they each have like five seasons, give us like, 15 20 shows that are each a season a piece because that way it just feels like you gave us 15 20 really big long epic movies and i like that mm -hmm. better I, I don't like the idea of having to be like okay now we got to wait another year for season two uh and yeah. like it's, you have shows that are great for that um but i don't want that to be 
part of this. I think th- I like this how it is. I like this just being I, its own thing. I have to agree with you. And w- what I'm going to throw out there to you as well is I, I like this kind of Star Wars approach, if you will. And in the sense of like, let's give, if you're going to do WandaVision, give me one good season of WandaVision where the events, the consequences of WandaVision impact the entire MCU uh, to make you want to go back and rewatch it because as we continue in other stories, if something happens that is related to WandaVision and, and they use a really cool detail that we may have completely missed and, and may not even is may not even covered in WandaVision, then later on you could do that scene that fills in that gap, much like Rogue One did for, for Star Wars. And, and then that makes you go, okay, I need to go back now and, and watch WandaVision. That's something I would rather see than like 10 seasons of, of a character that, you know, you need to tell all these little details that I may or may not care about. Exactly. You said the magic word, impact the MCU. Like, that's mm. why nobody cares about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because, you know, you have seven, eight seasons, 22 episodes a piece. Yeah. It's not going to impact the MCU. Like, Nobody in Thor Ragnarok is going to be like, remember that time when Fitz and Simmons went to that parallel? Nobody, nobody's, <laughs> nobody's saying that. So the, yeah. the hardcore MCU fans, sure, you know, they might enjoy, like I enjoyed the first three seasons that I saw of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but, you know, you get to a Same point here. where you're like, none of this is going to matter. I, I don't, you know, it's not going to affect what's going to happen in the big stories. And I don't mm. want WandaVision or any of these other shows to turn into that. You know, I don't want mm. She-Hulk to be like, five seasons where it's like every episode I have a new trial and it's like, that's great, but there's 2 million mm-hmm. courtroom drama shows I could watch. Give me the she Hulk mini series. That's going to make a difference in this one big story of whatever this saga is called. And that yeah. makes it more worthwhile. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that's, I think that's Kevin Feige's plan is that, you know, they're going to tell these, they're going to tell these stories that are going to have deep and meaningful uh, impacts in the MCU, but are impact in the MCU. But, you know, those events will be reflected on, but not expanded. And that's going to make you want to go back uh, and watch WandaVision and its whole. In fact, once WandaVision is done and, and, and I think by the timing of it, really, let's break it down real quick here. Um, is we got three more episodes left, right? One, two, three. So it ends on March 5th. We get a one week break and we dive right into Falcon Winter Soldier on the Friday, the following Friday. Yeah. So it's so, so that one Friday, that one Friday, I would love to go back and just watch the whole thing in one sequence do do a proper infinity rewatch which is this incredible show that we do this incredible podcast and as well we're doing this video um and and do it in a proper infinity rewatch the whole thing and see it all come together as one full length episode yeah as like a five-hour movie and you'll Mm -hmm. you'll appreciate it on a different level yeah I'm, i'm looking forward to that too so as as we close off this episode of Infinity Rewatch, we're going to play Never Tell Me the Odds. You ready, Ooh, Ryan? I gotta, I'm ready. I love I, Never I, Tell Me the Odds. I'm really excited about this odd, and I think you will be too. So yeah. Marvel is great. or let, let me rephrase that. The MCU is great at mm-hmm. showing fans what they've always wanted to see. It's also great at showing us things that we've never seen before with characters we have already seen. Right? You with me so far? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we got in this episode, even though it's done in a sort of mocking kind of way, we got the Scarlet Witch and Vision OG costumes. Uh, the Scarlet Witch one actually looks pretty damn cool. Uh, like, she looks good in it. She doesn't look silly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, they, I, like, I, I love seeing that. It was a nice treat. So, Ryan, what are the odds? At some point, we know that they're coming. So it's not a question of if, but when. What are the odds that the MCU Wolverine is going to have the Wolverine outfit with the black things on his eyes, brown or blue and yellow, whichever you prefer? What are the odds he's in that costume? Okay, so the odds... 
Mm. I'm going to say the odds are going to be pretty high. And I'll tell you why. Because everyone wanted to see him in the yellow and black. Mm -hmm. Technically, the yellow and blue, if you want to get really technical. But everyone wanted to see that outfit. And I'm curious to see how that outfit would translate into film. And the only taste we got of it was in probably the most terrible movie. Um <laughs> Well, not the most terrible. It was like the it was not as bad as Origins, but it no, was. I liked it was that not... that solo Wolverine movie. I thought that was a lot of fun. <laughs> I did. It I was mean, it, not not the yeah. not the X Men Origins, not the Ryan Reynolds. No, 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 no. You're talking about the Japanese one. The Japanese the one, one where she gives yeah. him the box with the thing in it, uh, because yeah. yeah, that that movie I actually really enjoyed. Okay, it, it's it's good, but it's not. It's not great. It's 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 passable. It's a passable Marvel film. I I still have some grudges with it, but overall, I still think it's it's it is a great unleash the Wolverine kind of experience, and it is a it is a Wolverine experience that they do a really cool job at. Uh, it was the Path of Redemption movie. That's what it was. Yeah. It was the beginning of the Path of Redemption, uh, and so uh, so they do show it but he's not wearing it and i think we'll see it i think we will see a i think we'll see like the traditional kind of wolverine outfit uh i would actually say we're probably going to see something closer to the orange the orange and black one as opposed to the yellow and blue um uh which is the astonishing x-men i think it is but i think we're going to see something like the orange and black one and it's going to i think it's i think it's actually going to be without the 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 mask i think we're gonna see i think we're gonna see his full outfit first without the mask and then we're gonna see it with the mask okay i like that what what percentage do you give it i'm gonna give it a solid 80 80 <laughs> percent i'm i'm right near there with you buddy i'm about 77 uh, percent, and mm. i think that um marvel's gonna go all out because They've they've been that way with the costumes before. I think we're going to get mm -hmm. the orange and brown and the blue and yellow uh, in that order. Because uh, I think if I remember mm -hmm. right, when we meet Wolverine in the comics, he starts with the orange and brown and That's then he right. goes into the yellow and blue. So I think we're going to get it mm -hmm. in that order uh, because we've seen so many variants of so many other costumes. And I think you have a point. I think we'll see the, the black mask thing a bit, kind of like how Captain America wears his like, his mask hood thing a bit, but most of the mm -hmm. time he just has it off and he's just in his costume sans mask. I think yeah. that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. And so, okay. So do you have another one? Cause I have one for you. I don't have another one. Bring it, bring it. Oh, okay. This is uh, this is my version of never tell me the odds. So here we go. If we see beast, mm -hmm. if, if we see beast, what are the odds that he will be Dr. Hank McCoy or will he be Beast? Oh, wow. Okay. And you, you're you posing this question within one vision, right? If we I have a theory. I actually have a theory that this is, I have a really good theory that this is, that how it could play out, which is, might take us a little over our usual hour, but by, few, by just a few minutes, but I have a really good theory how it's going to play out if, if that this aerospace engineer is Dr. Hank McCoy. Okay. I think, how do I put it's a good, percentage? It, is, it is good. good. <laughs> I, I'm trying to figure out how to put a percentage to it. I think um, it'll be, Hank McCoy, it'll be Kelsey Grammer just in in his flesh, right? Uh, but the hex will turn him into Beast uh, because again, Marvel is great at showing us these characters in stages, so we never see them the same way too many times in a row. Even with Ant Man, we see him as Ant Man. Next time we see him in Civil War, he can be Giant Man now. It's it's always a little bit different. So I think we'll see him as Hank McCoy, and then the hex whatever. If WandaVision ends with a post credit scene, which I think it will after the last episode, I think it'll be him coming out of whatever all blue. And he's like, oh, my stars and garters. I'm a blue man now. <laughs> that's, so that's where I'm going. I'm going to go 100%. He's Hank McCoy first. Uh, okay. I actually, yes, I had a bit of a, a relevation moment. You know, uh, I agree with you. I think he's going to come in as Hank McCoy himself. 
Um, but he's going to study her medical condition because that seems to be a topic of interest. Okay. He's going to study the medical condition and then he's going to be, he's like, oh yeah, I, I saw your medical charts, you know, and uh, I, I, you know, I have a serum that will, that will help you go in and it, it doesn't help them at all. Like he, he puts, he, he inoculates himself inoculates her and they go in fine. And then once they go in um, as, sorry, as they go in fine, um, the, the reality warping affects the serum and then they get their powers. And because it's a carnival, I think beast is going to appear in the carnival as a, as a, a, a freak of nature, essentially. Dude, and then people are going to be afraid of him. Right. Oh my God. That's it's, oh, I wish there was no pandemic. Cause I want to be sitting next to you when that happens. <laughs> I know. it'll just be us going like <laughs> i just i feel like that's gonna happen because like i don't know why they did the carnival it just makes no sense to do the carnival just out of nowhere you're so i mean it is right. a small town and carnivals is a is a popular thing that you would do in a small town mm. but oh why would you do that so specifically yeah that's um I, I, there's that's a perfect place to put them and I think there was even an episode of the cartoon where they were all locked in a carnival. I think there, the, there was that, that bad guy like Mesmero or something and he hypnotized them and they forgot who they were and they all got, or maybe there was just a book that I had that I remember a story and like Jubilee was the only one he didn't get and she has to like run through the carnival and save everybody and be like, no, no, don't mm. you remember? You're, you're not the, the psychic lady, you're Jean Grey, you're... You're, you're not the crazy ape man, you're beast. And then she was breaking them out of the carnival. Um, that's, uh, that fits, man. That fits with, with what we could see happen. I, I can't agree with you more. I am locking that in. That's happening. Yeah, I, you know, this, if this blows up, if this actually happens, oh man, we need to do the video. <laughs> and then we need to highlight these moments where we talked about it. Yeah. And show that Infinity Rewatch was there to predict it the whole time. The whole time. Oh, my God. My face is going to melt when that happens. Oh, man. But, yeah, I think that's uh, it's going to be an interesting play. And I still don't know this whole carnival thing, but I think it's a, it's going to have a very significant role within, within whatever's going to happen in WandaVision. And, you know, I will say, guys, as we're wrapping up here on Infinity Rewatch, which is a great channel, you should go check it out, the podcast. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, leave comments, the whole nine yards. Um, but I will also say that um, with WandaVision, what's always frustrating, and I was talking with uh, Fantasia here about it, was that it is hard to have to wait an entire week for the next episode. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it is very it's it's hard but it's like it's fun and i like that we get to sit here and talk about it but it's definitely it's definitely hard to have to wait while there's nothing else going on in the world you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i i am grateful that we get to kind of do this as like a like a special thing and be like ah, next week so it, it's a blessing in disguise. I, I, I really like. I was really happy when Mandalorian said they were doing it because I know mm -hmm. if I binge this, I would forget half of it. So I'm glad they're giving us that opportunity to stop and ask questions, just like Lost. You couldn't binge Lost when it came out, and that's why you got water cooler <laughs> talk like we're doing right now. Uh, that's what we are. We're the water cooler talk of Wandavision. But that's been another episode in the can. Three left. Um, yeah. You are listening to this. Uh, uh, on the day where tomorrow, uh, if you're listening to this when it comes out tomorrow, you can look forward to our episode on Spider-Man Homecoming. And that's a big one, guys. That episode ended up clocking in at two and a half hours long because we had a lot to say about Spider-Man Homecoming. So you can listen to that uh, on, it goes up Friday, February, uh, sorry, Saturday, February 13th. And uh, you'll be able to hear us wax poetic on the Spider-Man Oh. Uh, but uh, yeah, Beast is going to be in that cage. Lock it in, brother. You got it. Oh, got yeah. It. Love it. All right. Well, we will see you next time, or you will hear us next time, whichever mode you prefer. I ain't going to judge you. On Infinity Rewatch. Until then, everybody, have a marvelous day. <laughs> I'm doing Wolverine Claws. 